Hey guys, here's just a quick review of what we did for our warm-up today. Um, I asked you the question, what was the mathematical formula to calculate the speed of an object? And we talked about today that the speed of an object is calculated by taking the distance and dividing it by the time. So let's get to our notes that we took today on IP43. On IP43, you should have highlighted, written down and highlighted that speed is the same thing as rate. Sometimes we might use those words interchangeably. Speed is the distance divided by the time it took an object to go that distance. And make sure that whenever you're doing your work that you always include a unit. Pay attention to the units that are already in the problem so that you know what units to put in your answer, whether it's miles per hour or meters per second. And that word per, there it is, uh, gives me a clue that this whole unit is a speed because it gives me a distance and a time together. So here were the notes that we took today. Just a quick reminder, the DST triangle can help you manipulate the speed, distance, or time formulas. If a problem asks you how far did the object go, it means they want you to find the distance. If a problem asks you how fast did the object go, it means they want you to find the speed. And if the problem asks you how long did it take or how much time did it take the object to go, then it means that you're supposed to find the time of that object. So to use the DST triangle correctly, all you have to do is cover up the letter that you want to find within your problem. For example, to find the speed of an object using the DST triangle, D always goes on top, S always on the left, T always on the right. To find the speed of an object, all you have to do is cover up the S, so speed equals distance over time, or like we said in class, distance divided by time. To find the distance of an object, cover up the D. Distance would be speed times time because the speed and the time are not on top of each other. The S and the T are next to each other, and so in math that means multiply. If you want to find the time an object's traveled, how long did it take them, cover up the T. What you have left over is D over S, so the formula for time would be distance divided by speed. So here's the first problem, number one, on your homework for OP43. Lance Armstrong rode his bike for 25 hours without stopping. Before I move on, I have to recognize this number as a time, clocks around, so we circle this. In that time, he went 400 miles, 400 miles is a distance, so I underline it, and won the race. What was his speed? Since they asked me for the speed, I cover up the S, and what I have left over is D over T. So I know that the problem needs to be set up like this. Speed equals distance divided by time. And again, forgive my handwriting because I'm doing this with my cursor. The distance that he went was 400 miles divided by the time, 25 hours. And I'm not including the unit just for the sake of time. If I show my work, which you're supposed to do, 400 divided by 25. 25 goes into 400 16 times, and now I have to go back to the unit. Miles per hour. You can write MPH. And here's your answer for number one. Numbers two, three, four, five, and six are pretty much the same as number one. But when you get to number seven, they're gonna ask you for something different. Andrew drove from Las Vegas to Riverside in three hours. Three hours is a time, it's just on two separate lines, so I'm gonna circle it. During this trip, he traveled at a constant speed of 90 miles per hour. I need to really look at this number. This number right here is a speed. I know because it has the word per in there. So I circle and underline it because it includes both distance and time. What is the distance? How far is it from Las Vegas to Riverside? This is actually a true story, by the way. So since they asked me for distance, I cover up the D. What I have left over is S next to the T, which means my formula for distance equals speed times time. And in math, you can use the dot instead of the multiply sign. So speed, his speed was 90 miles per hour times the time, which was three hours. Nine times three 
is 28. Add your zero. No, it's 27. Nine times three. Ah, I totally had a brain fart. Nine times three is not 28, it is 27, of course, and don't forget your zero. So 90 times three would be 270. And look at your units. I ask for the distance and it's miles. The distance is in miles. Let's move on. Next couple of problems are the same except for this one, number eight, also a true story. Robin is my best friend. Robin is planning her trip to Disneyland. She knows that Disneyland is 400 miles away. 400 miles is a distance, I underline. But she doesn't want to speed, so she will go 65 miles per hour the whole way. 65 miles per hour is a speed. So I underline and circle. How long did, will it take Robin to get to Disneyland? How long is a time? So I'm gonna cover up the time. So I know the formula for time is distance over speed, or divided by, as we say in this class, distance divided by speed. So take a second to set up your own problem. Distance is 400, the unit of course is miles divided by 65 miles per hour, that's the speed. Show your work. If you show your work, we will find that Robin traveled for a certain time and her answer is in hours. And I wanna know what you got for your answer. I'm not giving you the answer for this one. I just wanted to help you set it up. Email me if you have any additional questions, but if you use the DST triangle, you should be good. You should be able to figure it out. Check out your notes. Email me if you have any questions. I'll see you tomorrow.